Welcome back to The Connor Show. We've prepared 10 creppy adventure films for you. Are you ready? Let's dive into the suspenseful journey together and see what awaits us. Number 10. Vadim Vedimich, a Russian YouTuber, often explores the radioactive remains of Chernobyl, an abandoned power plant that experienced a meltdown in the 1980s. During one exploration, he and his friends discover an eerie abandoned area. They come across unsettling sites, including two dolls, one headless, the other with aggressively poked in eyes. While these might be the work of edgy teens or even someone in their group, they decide to continue exploring. They find a picture of a Russian team gathered around a mysterious object and Vadim seeks help to understand its significance. This image may represent the children who frequented the daycare before the meltdown. The haunting exploration also reveals a disturbing photo of a crying Russian woman in full uniform, the meaning of which remains unclear. It seems like they're encountering something significant and translating the Russian text may provide more insight. As time passes, it becomes clear that they're under observation. White eyes initially appear on the other side of a window. Initially mistaken for a light, it became evident as the light hits the chest and shouldn't be visible behind. The eyes reappear in a nearby doorway, closer this time. It's just a moment, but seriously, whose flashlight looks like that? Not any I've seen. Those definitely resemble eyes, glowing ones at that. They revisit a section of the building they've explored before, finding the door partially open this time, prompting cautious entry. Floating eyes, similar in size and shape to the previous ones, are observed. However, this time, they realize it's the top of someone's head. Someone incredibly tall and complete little figure with a blacked out face and long white garment stands motionless. They retreat but encounter it again. The white clothes resemble the dull clothes seen earlier. Could that have been a warning? As it gets closer, it seems shorter but impossibly broad-shouldered and powerful. Despite fear and exhaustion frozen in place, they let it get too close. I hope it was just a mannequin, but its movements suggest otherwise. The croup retreats back inside, feeling cornered, and ultimately decides to smash through a window, taking the risk of climbing through broken glass just to escape from whatever they just encountered. Number 9. Today, we're exploring an abandoned haunted house near my place. YouTuber Chippy Watson ventures in at 3 a.m. for a paranormal investigation. Things take a dark turn when they encounter a chilling room that sends shivers down their spines, prompting a hasty door closure. A ghostly presence looms, creating an unsettling atmosphere. Oh, no. Shut that. Guess what you might have missed as he opens the door. There's this ghost orb or weird light on camera, kind of slipping into that small room. Super creepy, right? It's completely shut. Completely shut. Alright, let's get that up in the attic because we never did. Avoiding the attic, soft floor, especially at 3 a.m. No spooky sightings on camera. But let me know if you see anything in the basement. They stumble upon more eerie evidence or footsteps in the dust. Someone's been pacing in circles, kicking holes into the room. Seriously creepy stuff. Look at all those footsteps. Look at the holes in the wall. Perhaps poltergeist activity or kids partying in an abandoned house. The group ventures upstairs, finding an open door. Suspecting a ghost, I say it might be a loose tool knob. Common in abandoned houses, yet, they got scared here before, feeling a ghost nearby. It could be paranormal, now. The scariest 3 a.m. moment, his friend urges him closer to capture the ghostly noises on camera. Uh. Did you just knock? Soft knocking. Eerie noises from the other side of the door, not them. The stickies holding don't touch the wall and watch. What? What? What?
and when to more knocks happen, while he's standing even farther away, so it's not him. Did you just knock? Who knows what they would have seen if they looked inside the room one final time. Number 8. There's a YouTube channel called The Ghosts of Mississippi dedicated to debunking paranormal hotspots. They fearlessly travel nationwide for investigations, exemplifying true dedication. One haunting series features a church in their home state. On December 19, they enter, express sympathy for the church's condition, and address any spirits. After establishing trust, they make a small request from anything listening. I just make one loud noise. Sure, he might have intentionally scraped his foot to create the sound, so this alone doesn't serve as conclusive evidence of a ghost. However, when they bring out the spirit box and begin posing questions, they receive two distinct responses. All right, do you want to speak to me now? When he feigns ignorance, a second note emerges, seemingly not from the spirit box, but from a row of pews further back. Yes? Yes. Even if the spirit box is just picking up random radio signals, the chances of hearing nope twice, perfectly timed with a question, are pretty unlikely in my book. Suddenly, orbs start swirling around, and then it mentions a name. I could barely make it out, so I'm a bit skeptical about this part. Kevin, I heard that. Versus subsequent plea for assistance, however, is crystal clear and it's eerie how it takes an appropriate amount of time to respond. I don't believe the orbs swirling around are mere coincidence. Then there's this strange shadow figure in the stall. Is this Kevin the spirit, or is this the thing that Kevin was asking for help against just a couple of weeks later on January 5, 2020? They return to the church for a closer look, this time as one of them kneels down to look at the mirror. This creepy image of an evil entity forms before their very eyes. So stand up and get sleep. Dude, I'm seeing something demonic. <laughs> Where a creepy demonic figure appears in the mirror, described by the investigators as having raised hands, two eyes, and a small open mouth on the right side. When the investigator stands up, the figure disappears and attempts to recreate it with a light on the mirror fail. The, the investigator claims to have felt something grab his hat during the experience. They decide to leave due to roaming cold spots, and as they exit, a hiss is heard. Freaking. Dude. As they enter the final room, a mysterious warning sound emanates from deeper within, for which I have no explanation other than the paranormal. <laughs> this doesn't sound like any animal I've ever heard, and I can practically feel the malice in its guttural growl. They look for the source of the growl for just a moment longer then decide to make a swift exit. Was with so many eerie sounds and sightings in such a short time, I have little doubt that something terrifying lurks within these walls. Its very presence defiles this location, and maybe that's why this demonic force has chosen to call this place home. I doubt it's leaving anytime soon. They hear a warning sound from deeper within. Number seven. Proper Life, a YouTube channel, takes on a 24-hour challenge at the Haunted Stockyards Hotel. Built in 1910 as the first bed and breakfast in Fort Worth, Texas. It's known for paranormal activity from various time periods at 3 a.m. The crew explores for signs of hauntings. Ryan discovers handwritten notes from paranormal investigators, reading them aloud, inciting fresh poltergeist activity caught on camera. In this tale of the haunted hotel, the mystery unfolds and heard a strange noise in the middle of the room. What the f was that? What? Look at the mirror. What the f is the mirror? Oh my God. Mirror moves on its own, objects in the next room, fan on full speed. Yet a heavier object moves by itself, seems paranormal to them, maybe to you too. Exploring the haunted room, they find the fan, likely mover of the mirror, turned off. Camera repeatedly goes out of focus on Zack, suggesting a ghost, despite proper lighting. It persists, 
considered paranormal evidence. Is that focusing on you? It's like a flashing. It is not focusing on you. It is not focusing on you at all. Are we good? No. Really? It's not focusing on you. That's really Camera acting weird only around Zack since he entered that spooky room. Maybe a spirit attached to him. More objects move on their own at 3 a.m. as the group splits up. This room's really creepy. Like, do you get the chill in here? Like, I'm, you feel that? Look at that hat on the wall. Like, I just. I oh, feel, did you hear that? Yeah. Was that not you? Ooh, ooh, that's creepy. Oh, it's still creepy. Oh, go, go, go. When they regroup to share findings, more paranormal evidence is caught on tape. Like, dripping down our face. What was that? Did you guys make a note? The entire proper life crew is huddled together in one room. No way those spooky noises are from another room. Admit it, Stockyard's hotel is seriously creepy and undoubtedly haunted. One night I'm in my bed asleep and this old lady comes out of my closet. She's all like, she's like down her face. Did you guys hear that? What was that? Did you guys make a note? Number 6. South Korean ghost hunter, Tosachi, explores a haunted house where Seven met a grim fate, including a couple. The interior, in his words, is weird and creepy, giving the paranormal investigator goosebumps. He senses multiple spirits and suddenly, one captures his attention. The chilling exploration unfolds with each step. Boyo. Soft knocks behind. A ghost pleads from the window, begging to be let in. A thorny relic. In South Korean belief, wards off spirits when above the entrance, keeping them at bay. Isso, isso. Isso, isso. Isso. Hold your breath every time he steps out to catch a ghost on tape. His motion tracking freezes a sinister sign, spirits lurking, waiting for him to release the relic. As he ditches the stick and waits, they stroll in through the front door. The air thickens with horror as they reclaim their haunting ground. In a heartbeat, horror rises as a spirit passes through. Him. Unfortunately, his paranormal equipment repeatedly malfunctions. Just as he's about to capture the ghost on tape, the equipment goes dark. When it's back on, a ghost materializes in the pitch black hallway, no mistaking it for a person, just pure darkness, yet. The equipment detects a mysterious, shadow figure gliding, he returns to the window, where he previously heard knocking, to his horror, another ghost figure appears, relieved to be back inside, it climbs to sit in the window, giving a creepy wave hello, the chilling presence lingers. Number 5. Rain and Gino from Sinister, RP are back to settle a paranormal grudge that started at Boyd Cemetery, in Canada, after exploring a haunted apartment three days ago, they find the ghost from the cemetery has followed them, that night, using a ghost hunting app. They make spiritual contacts, the eerie conversation takes a sinister turn, intensifying the paranormal grudge. The chilling continuation of their supernatural encounter unfolds. Can you tell me your name? If there is anything following me, you are not allowed to anymore. <laughs> Ernest's ghostly voice is followed by a sarcastic little girl who dismisses the idea of banishment. With a too bad, even as Ernest says goodbye, his tone remains sarcastic, creating an eerie atmosphere. I said goodbye. In real time, Spine-chilling EVPs make sense from the other side, Rain and Gino. 
unyielding in their own home, bravely revisit the cemetery three days later for a final showdown. However, the ghost voice only scorns and ominously warns them, heightening the supernatural suspense. Please do not follow us home. You are not allowed to follow us home. You are not allowed to attach yourselves to us or anything that we have here. We are going now. Goodbye. The spirits seem unconvinced as Rain and Gino silently exit Boyd Cemetery, a fiendish figure, possibly old Ernest, glimpsed behind a marker, appears beyond architectural features, intensifying the supernatural eeriness when zoomed in. Sinister up he ponders whether returning did more harm than good. They claim a real ghost fighting caught on camera, seeking agreement or alternative explanations. Number 4. Number 1 on the Paranormal YouTube channel list is Explore With Us Ghost Hunting. In their latest investigation, the team explores the Nevada countryside, revisiting when and Dixon disappeared in the 1970s, encountering mysterious lights, potential headlights, and unfriendly locals. They drive toward an abandoned house linked to Nan Dixon's ghost, capturing what seems to be a solid black ghost orb, later revealed as a smudge on their car windshield. Around the couple minute, a strange 3A in sighting reveals a phantom face slowly slinking away in the dark room. Following this, some camera equipment experiences a battery failure. Mysterious lights and flashes continue, and paranormal equipment starts flashing with supernatural energy. Exploring another abandoned house, strange lights seem to follow them, adding to the eerie atmosphere. The unexplained phenomena raise questions about the haunted nature of the area and the potential presence of spirits. Number 3 versus Rife, the Vegas Life YouTube channel explores Fort Fremont in Beaufort, South Carolina, using only a spirit box and a camera. This leads to one of the scariest moments of their lives. First in a small green room, they feel uneasy, sensing they are being watched. The camera captures breathing sounds they don't notice in the moment. I don't mess with no cars. Out. The hidden room makes them stumble over words and break into a sweat. I feel like I'm getting kind of chills a little bit. It's weird, like a body tingle, tingling body. I'm not like a, I don't know, it, it feels weird. It seems like a description of a haunted place. They quickly record an EP to verify. Spirit. Spirit. I heard it. The following EVP doesn't seem to originate from the spirit box. Instead, it sounds like it's coming from behind her. Did it just say Megan? Yes! Oh my god. Oh, okay. That's good enough for me. Alright. Got full freaking body chills right now. Scary whispers of her name overwhelm Megan, leading to the swift conclusion of the investigation. This occurrence brings back memories of a spooky exploration video from Washington at 4KC Fun years ago. A team of students, while exploring an abandoned building, senses danger and decides to turn back. Just before they do, one of them captures unsettling shadow figures in the hall. The whole hall, empty one moment, suddenly features a figure that clearly doesn't fit. An oddly shaped, short body with skinny legs, possibly hooved. conclusion, what I'm trying to convey is that, based on these two videos, it's likely better to avoid exploring abandoned forts in the woods unless you're seeking something exceptionally crappy. Number 2. Lanzo owns a spooky ranch, and he's too scared to go there. He heard it's haunted from his uncle, who once had a creepy chat with a man claiming to be a demon. The man vanished mysteriously. Since that day, strange things happen on the one-acre property, lots of ghostly stuff going on. Just from now, from that day and now on, it's always been like creepy for me and my cousins to come here at night. I thought I heard something that was scared. I... Do you guys hear that? Do you guys hear that? He hears spooky whispers and haunting voices in the nearby woods. He tries to brush off the thoughts. But I believe I heard those whispers too, accompanied by other eerie sounds that might be the wind. It's midnight, and as they get closer, 
They sense ghostly energy feeding on their fear. Right there. What the, what the f you guys? And I'm gonna impart. Their equipment won't focus on a single spooky area because they believe a ghost is around. Using night vision and motion tracking gear, they spot a super tall figure in the same eerie spot. This makes the dogs bark like crazy, since animals know Lonzo well. There's a figure right there. The dogs aren't facing them, providing more evidence that something paranormal has captured their attention. Something's clearly back there. Even the horse seems to be frightened. I feel sorry for all these terrifying encounters. These poor animals probably experience this regularly living on this haunted ranch. The horse starts moving frantically at a certain moment, and then they spot a ghost trying to climb some firewood for a ride. As the panicking animal sways back and forth to escape the apparition, but it's no use. I'm not sure if the horse is scared of a ghost or just hungry as this is a nighttime video. However, I don't think the horse should be hungry. We noticed that there was a figure that was dancing with the horse like next to it. Like literally right there you guys, like I'm getting the chills. I'm terrified right now. Behind this gate is where the dogs were barking at something. And that's when they get really scared because their paranormal equipment starts acting up again. I literally can't feel my feet like... It's starting to detect something. Dude, what? They need to go around the building to see what's on the other side of the gate but they hardly take a few steps before their camera goes out of focus. Over here. Where's and in the woods, they hear a really weird voice, like laughter. When they consult their paranormal equipment for a translation, it interprets only one word. If there's anyone here with us, give us a sign. Goodbye. Oh my God, no. When it utters this phrase, a single ghost orb flies into them. I wouldn't be surprised if this ranch was haunted by skinwalkers after all. Skinwalkers are paranormal tricksters known to haunt ranches built on ancient prairie lands. So, with this in mind, a ghost sighting on this ranch would make sense Number one. In another investigation, Luna and friends attempt a spirit summoning, and it seems to have worked. Oh, look at it, look at it. Thank you. You know, other people are here, aren't you? Don't you? Does it really make you happy? In the Omen House, a group infiltrates a famous celebrity's home, capturing eerie footage. Paranormal equipment registers spirit motion, possibly affected by a ghost hunter lifting a K to meter upon closer inspection. A paranormal energy spike coincides with motion sensor activations. Soon after, an unexplained blue light sweeps the room, deemed not a flashlight, initially skeptical. Doubts linger until a team member demonstrates shelf stability, yet, as he departs, an object topples inexplicably. A frequent occurrence, the chilling events unfold in the Omen House, questioning the boundary between the paranormal and skepticism. I want to show them one more time a final goodbye before they all leave. Are you just going to keep doing this? They're going to jump. Oh, no! The same object inexplicably falls twice, while it could be attributed to an unbalanced toy. The timing, Occurring as he walks away, hints a potential ghostly intervention. The repetition suggests a ghost with selective intelligence seeking attention. Glowing Ghost Paranormal investigates McIntyre Villa in Atchison, Kansas. Sightings of shadow figures and paranormal activities are frequent in a unique EVP session. Michael, blindfolded and with headphones, deciphers spirit box responses. How old are you? Nine. <gasps> Picture. In the basement, a little ghost girl's voice speaks to Michael, withholding her name and remaining silent when asked why she's there. Can you tell us why you're here?
I heard like it was like a scream in the thing. A harrowing scream pierces the air, sensing with the glitch in the camera audio, Michael, reacting to a voice screaming, hints at a sinister past in the basement. The nine-year-old ghost's inability to describe it differently than a scream, the EVP session, continues, Michael's coherent answers intensifying the unease. Uh, it sounds like nice or not nice. <gasps> oh my god. Can you tell us the name of the person that hurt you? No. As Michael's answers impeccably align with the questions, doubts arise about the authenticity of his sensory deprivation. The mystery deepens. Can I'm getting the chills. Soldier? Go look. Oh it's my god. The it's, wall? If you want us to go look in the library with the man, the soldier, can you say yes? The paranormal investigation moves upstairs, validating the spirit box's mention of a uniformed man in the library behind a door. They discover a picture of a young girl, revealing her name and a cryptic code. Your request for help in solving the code intrigues me. While not asserting the video's falseness, the possibility of prior room exploration for scripted answers exists. If the ghost's claims prove accurate, the only option is to peer inside the wall. As suggested, a final, unsolved, eerie moment occurs as reflections in the mirror shift. With no apparent movement from the ghost hunter, this enigma coupled with the unexplained code and historical findings, supports the haunting nature of the house.